Hello, you wonderful people. Welcome to the second, technically third, video of Redo June. And for this episode, I'm redoing my Mimikyu video, which is my very first YouTube video, but it was originally planned on being my second. Watch my Redo June announcement video for my full explanation. But now let's make a version of this video that doesn't make me ask, what was I doing? Q opening. Have you ever looked at a Pokemon, one that was introduced later in the series and thought, what if this thing was in Generation 1? How would it play with outdated mechanics? Because I always wonder what would have happened if my favorite Pokemon, Frostlass, wait, my favorite Pokemon, Bayonet, Mimikyu, yeah, my favorite Pokemon has changed a lot, was introduced in Generation 1. How would it have played in the older games? And what would this theoretical Gen 1 Mimikyu have to go through to become the Mimikyu we have now? Here's what I'm considering. The early Gen stats, how Disguise would have looked, its older typings, early Gen move poles, who would have used it, and where it could have been found to see what a pre-Gen 7 Mimikyu would have looked like. I don't know, for a fan game or something? That adds literally nothing but Mimikyu. So let's start with stat changes. Since we're starting with Gen 1, we have to talk about the special stat. Prior to Gen 2, special attack and special defense were one stat. So Pokemon like Alakazam, who have high special attack, also had large special defense. So knowing this, what would Mimikyu's stats look like in Gen 1? Right now, Mimikyu's special stats are 50 for special attack and 105 for special defense. So what would be used for Gen 1 Mimikyu's special stat? As much as I'd love to make it the 105, the 50 makes more sense. In many cases, it seemed like the special stat had offense in mind. When Gen 2 rolled around, most special stats were made into special attack. So seeing this, I think Mimikyu having a special stat of 50 would have made more sense. At the very least, since Mimikyu has a base speed stat of 96, it would also have a good crit chance. In Gen 1, crit chance was based on the speed stat. So slow Pokemon would pretty much never land a critical hit, while fast Pokemon always Always landed one. Another thing that kind of lands in Mimikyu's favor is that all ghost moves are physical before the physical special split. Prior to Gen 4, whether a move was physical or special was based on the typing. So for example, all ice type moves were special. So Ice Punch, which is physical now, used to use the special stat. So in Gen 1, all ghost moves were physical. In red, blue, and yellow, the only ghost moves were Confuse Ray, Lick, and Nightshade. So because Lick, the only ghost move that used the attack stat, seemed like it should be physical physical, they made all ghost type moves physical, and sadly Mimikyu cannot learn these moves, meaning Gen 1 Mimikyu has no stab moves, making it ghost type Scyther, a Pokemon with good stats, but no proper way to use it. Okay, so pure ghost type with no stab, a low special stat, and abilities don't exist yet, so how about we talk about which Kanto trainer would use it, because you weren't seeing it in competitive. Agatha is the ghost type elite 4 member of Kanto, and she definitely could have been given one, if just to give her an actual ghost team instead of a glorified poison team. Finally, a good spot for Mimikyu is Lavender Town, but other good spots could be the Safari Zone or the route surrounding Saffron City. That last one can be a reference to Sabrina's doll in the anime or to Psychic's supposed weakness against Ghost. But with Gen 1 covered, we're now at Gen 2. Since Gen 2 introduced a special split, Mimikyu's stats are what they actually are now. 50 special attack and 105 special defense. Disguise would still not exist. But Shadow Ball does. Shadow Ball is a base 80 power ghost type move introduced in Gen 2. And Mimikyu can learn it. While it's special now, remember that prior to Gen 4, all ghost moves were physical, making Mimikyu the best option for stab Shadow Ball in Gen 2. But would Johto's Morty have used this best option? As much as I'd like to say yes, for the same reason as Agatha, to give Morty a more diverse team, I think that it would also be funny if he still just used the Gengar line. I mean, Mischievous is right there and he still didn't use it. And finally, for Mimikyu's placement in Johto, the Burnt Tower would be a good option, making it even funnier that Morty wouldn't use one. But now we're at Gen 3 with Hoenn, with Fire Red and Leaf Green allowing trainers to use the improved Gen 1 Mimikyu, with Shadow Ball to use for Stab, and more importantly, 
Disguise. Mimikyu would now have its signature disguise ability. It would probably start the way it was in Gen 7, but nerfed later in the series, like how it was in Gen 8. Mimikyu's move pull would also expand a bit. Gen 3 introduced Astonish, Grudge, and Shadow Punch. Mimikyu can't learn Shadow Punch, but it learns Astonish at an early level and can have Grudge as an egg move. Hoenn's Ghost Specialist is the Elite Four's Phoebe, and I definitely think she would have used a Mimikyu. Heck, if we ever see her again, like in a setting such as the World Tournament, she probably will. Mimikyu just fits Phoebe really well. It's an Alolan Pokemon, with Phoebe's getup being Hawaiian inspired. It looks cute, which I'm sure Phoebe would enjoy, and it could replace her first Dusclops, making the one she uses as her ace feel more special. Finally, Mount Pyre could be a good place to find Mimikyu. Now we're at Gen 4 Sinnoh region, my territory. As I mentioned before, this is where the physical special split occurs. So while Shadow Ball isn't useful to Mimikyu anymore, more, it can at least use the newly introduced Shadow Claw or Shadow Sneak. Fantina is Sinnoh's Ghost type gym leader, but I don't think Mimikyu would fit her well. Her team is already diverse enough, so she doesn't have the same problem as Agatha or Morty, so Fantina would be the first, for sure, ghost type trainer that wouldn't use Mimikyu. Again, it would be funny if Morty skipped Mimikyu. For Mimikyu's placement, the old chateau could be a good place, but it might be too early for Mimikyu's base stats. Instead, a higher floor in Mount Cornet could be a better fit. Alternatively, Sword and Shield made it seem like Mimikyu is fond of foggy environments, so Route 210 might be the best place to fit it in. It would be after you have 5 badges in all Sinnoh games, and I think that's a good place to be able to catch Mimikyu. Now we're at Gen 5 Unova region, specifically with the black and white sequels. Because of Black and White's overhead decision to only include Unova and Pokemon in the Unova decks, this is where Mimikyu will change the least. Mimikyu would have access to some new ghost moves, but aside from that, everything is pretty much the same as it was in Gen 4, which means we can skip to Chantal, the ghost type elite 4 member of Unova. In the initial challenge mode battle of Black 2 and White 2, Chantal uses a Bayonet, which I've always seen as being related to Mimikyu. They're both plush like Pokemon, Bayonet literally being a plush doll, while Mimikyu's disguise makes it look like one. So if Chantal uses Bayonet in the initial battle, then maybe she can use Mimikyu in the rematch team. Now for where Mimikyu can be found in the Unova games. In base black and white, it could be found in White Forest or Route 13, a post-game route where Shuppet is found. And in the sequels, it could be found in Celestial Tower or the Strange House. And now we're at Gen 6, the Kalos region. Our Gen 1 Mimikyu has almost become the Mimikyu it is now. But there's one last change it needs to go through. Our Gen 1 Mimikyu would finally go from a pure ghost type to a ghost fairy type. Gen 6 introduced the fairy type, and with it, some new Pokemon. But it also changed the typing of older Pokemon. Some Pokemon like Gardevoir gained the fairy typing alongside its original psychic typing, while other Pokemon like Clefable had their typing changed completely, going from a pure normal type to a pure fairy type. So with the move from the DS to the 3DS, Mimikyu would have been an older Pokemon who got the fairy typing in addition to their original typing. And now for the ghost type specialist. If there was one. As of now, Kalos is the only region to not have a ghost specialist of any kind. But Mimikyu isn't out of luck just yet. Because while there's no ghost specialist, there is a fairy type specialist. Enter Valerie, the fairy type gym leader of Kalos. But I'm not sure if she would have had a Mimikyu. Mimikyu doesn't fit her aesthetic too well. But if we were to force it onto her team, it could replace either her useless Mawile or her Mr. Mime. Who I also don't think fits her team all that well. And for Mimikyu's placement, I'd vote for Reflection Cave. Because the idea of a Pokemon who hates how it really looks like living in a cave full of mirrors is funny to me. Other good options are Route 15 and Route 16, since they have an eerie look to them. And with that, we're done. Oras would allow us to use Gen 1 Mimikyu and Hoenn again. Now with the physical special split and the fairy typing. And after that, Gen 7 would roll around. And Mimikyu's progression would go the same way it's going now. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I enjoyed being able to remake this video. And I hope this version is far more bearable than the original. I mean, the original started like this. Have you ever looked at a Pokemon? One has introduced later in a series and thought, what if this thing was in Generation 1? But anyways, would you like to see more what if type videos like this? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you all for the final video of Redo June, where I'll be uploading a special project that's a whole year overdue. Have a nice day, you wonderful people.